Welcome to South Africa and welcome to the Hood Sprite Reptile Center. The mission of this place is to save animals. But this is not always as easy and romantic as it might sound. We're talking about snakes, spiders, crocodiles, lizards, scorpions. And unfortunately, a lot of people do not support the idea of saving these animals. But as we all know, it is crucial for our environment to protect all species of animals and plants, including reptiles. Therefore, the Hutzpah Reptile Center is operating a catch and release program where we catch snakes from people's property and then release them again far away from people. In the middle of the day, we receive a phone call from someone who says that he captured a big python and locked it away. He wants us to take it from him because he's scared of possible consequences by law. Because the African rock python is a protected species in South Africa. Apparently he left the snake in a hole underground for weeks without water or food. Man, this snake needs our help. So as we arrive the man changes his mind and refuses to give us the snake. He says he wants money from us. As we were in an abandoned village, with more and more people gathering around us, we decided to leave and get the police involved to ensure our safety and to save the snake. Only after long discussion and law enforcement by the police, we were finally able to secure the snake. We made sure that it was okay and gave it some time to recuperate at the reptile center. Now, it is finally time to release it back into the wild. All right, so we're here in Africa. We got the whoa, African rock python here. Woo! Oh no, it's biting the stick there. Settle it down now, buddy. This one's really defensive, and that is exactly what they're notorious for. These pythons right here, they are extremely defensive. They bite at everything that moves in front of them. Now, that's a good striking position, and I am in strike range. Whoa, you see that? If I stand here, it bites me easy. Look at this S-shaped position. It's called up, ready to go. It's fired up, it's really warm now. And this one right here means business. Any, anywhere close in here, gotta get a nasty bite. A hundred needle sharp, back curved teeth. They're gonna slice all your veins off. It's gonna be blood everywhere. Fortunately for us, there are no bacteria in the saliva, which means that unlike a cat or dog bite, we will not get any uh, big trouble out of it except that we're gonna be bleeding a lot and it's gonna be extremely painful. Imagine like a hundred, almost a centimeter long um, needles going to your flesh, ripping off all your veins. Sometimes they also twist with their head or out of instinct we pull back. So we're gonna rip all our flesh right off our bones. So now it's settling down here and you can see the camouflage. So this is the African python. We call it the Southern African python or also the rock python. So here in Africa we have something we call the Northern African rock python, which is the longest and biggest snake we can find on the entire continent of Africa. Whoo! The southern one is a little bit smaller and they are feisty. Look at their temperament and they are like that because here in Africa there are lots of predators that will prey on the snake. Mongoose, meerkats when they're smaller, even leopards or lions when they're bigger. Because they're non-venomous, they're like a constrictor, so they bite, crawl around and squeeze to kill the prey. So what you see there is all muscle. And you can look and see how it's just breathing with force through the nostrils, creating this sound. It's like a warning that you can hear. And when the snake strikes, it basically expects me to drop everything and run. And this right here is in fact a small specimen. I would say it's about two meters in length. They can go up to about four and a half meters. And um, the Northern African rock python considered to be the third longest snake on the entire planet. Beautiful colors, very excellent for camouflage. But a big snake like this, you're gonna see it easy. Whoa, there you go. Now let me see if I can calm it down a little bit because they get tired soon. Because when they realize I'm not trying to catch or kill and hurt them, they actually settle down quite quick. So let's see if that actually works with this one. Oh, whoa, whoa. See, it's calling up. Look, it's like a spring. It is just like a spring. Do you see that? Chuck, 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 chuck. So I come here, bites me, you know? It's an incredibly big strike range with a snake this size. But even though, now we can have a look at the size here. Look at that. 
I would say it's about, no, not too, but just whack, whack, whack. That was close. I don't want to take a whack in the face by a snake like this. Got the thorn bush behind me. You take a whack in the face by a snake like this can rip your eye out. No problem at all. So now, you see, that's almost like a behavior like a cobra calling up. There's no way I can touch the snake anywhere without getting a bite from it. Absolutely incredible. So this snake here would instantly be able to kill and bring down animals and also eat them. That about 10 times the size of its head. And its head has about the same size almost as my fist. So it's a huge head and you can imagine what kind of prey a snake like this could actually bring down. And if it eats a big prey like that, that's about 10 times the size of the head, would be enough to sustain this python for, I say about three, four months. In fact, that could actually go almost a year without eating again. Look at this snake. It's absolutely wild, perfect. Because this shows me that this snake is healthy and in a quite good condition. But before finally releasing the snake into the wild, we wanted to take a closer look to evaluate its condition properly and to make sure that it is 100% ready to go. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you, I appreciate that a lot. Um, so you can actually spot the snake by just looking at something that's shiny out here in the bush. And when you see some reflection, especially now, you see it's sunset. So now when it's sunset and you look at the snake like this, you see the reflection of the scales. I can't even breathe right now because the smell is just disgusting. So they do it obviously for me to let go of the snake. Now, interesting if you come close to the head, the rock python, like some other pythons, they have what we call heat sensing pits. So those heat sensing pits, they're just right underneath the nostrils on the specimen here, or on the species basically. So only some pythons actually have heat sensing pits and also some pit vipers, they do have them. So they use them when it comes to um, detecting prey that is not even moving. So they can actually sense what is the prey not moving without actually even smelling, which is perfect for them to hit their uh, prey nicely. And they have those cat eyes. Get a nice look at those cat eyes, which are perfect for nocturnal vision. So the snake right here would be perfect when it comes to hunting during the night time because those cat eyes basically allow it to control the amount of light that goes into the eye much better than with round pupils. You can still hear it's like hissing. It's definitely not amused to be around me. And now it's not constricting me. In fact, it's just trying to hold because they don't got no arms, no legs, doesn't want to fall. So it's calling around me nicely. If they would constrict, my arm would basically turn blue. So now, just trying to ease myself out of here. Let go, buddy, you're on the ground now. You don't have to hold no more. So now, I will let it go, not in the thorn bush. I don't want to hurt itself. Come out of the thorn bush, buddy. Take care, buddy. What a successful rescue. Thanks to places like the Hutzpah Reptile Center, beautiful animals like these don't end up dying or killed, but are rescued and nurtured for. The snake will never understand its luck, but that's alright. We do it for the love of the reptiles. The rock python. Awesome.